You may have heard Donald Trump and Trump supporters claim that during Donald Trump's presidency there was no war. That's all they say is no war. Under me there was no war. Under Trump there was no war. And then they compare it to Joe Biden's presidency and they go, look now there's the war in Ukraine and then there's the war in Gaza. And I, I just want to dispel the myth that there was no war during Donald Trump's presidency. Uh, I just recently interviewed on The Weekend Show Miles Taylor, who was the anonymous whistleblower who wrote the New York Times op-ed whilst he was working for Donald Trump in national security. And he blew the whistle to say basically that Donald Trump was extremely dangerous during his presidency. He was impulsive. He didn't care much for humanity. And when it came to war, Donald Trump was very keen to start one. And if it wasn't for the adults in the room, then he probably would have done. The reason that there was not a catastrophic global conflict during the Donald Trump presidency was not because of Donald Trump. It was despite Donald Trump. And let me tell you what I mean. I think if it were not for courageous people like my former boss, John Kelly, former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis, to a certain extent, Rex Tillerson and others, there's Mark quite Milley. a high, Mark Milley, there's quite a high likelihood that the United States would have been thrust into extraordinary conflict during the Trump presidency because of things he wanted to do. And even more specifically than that, I want to point to North Korea because the way that the president was handling North Korea at the time so concerned all of us in his national security cabinet that for the first time in the history of the Department of Homeland Security in the United States, we had to hold private exercises to assess what would happen if Trump accidentally got us into a nuclear war and there was a nuclear strike on the U.S. homeland. To my knowledge, and I ran this by the Department of Homeland Security when I was publishing this book, there was no other circumstance since the department's been created where DHS had to do real life nuclear war planning because the president was putting us in such a volatile position. So if you think Trump kept us out of wars, what I'm telling you is, I'm not trying to say Miles kept us out of wars, but a lot of good people around Donald Trump prevented him from making decisions and taking actions that could have got us into the most dangerous conflict we've ever been in in the modern history of the Republic, up to potentially and including World War II. I mean, the guy was playing with fire when it came to nuclear weapons, and we were really, really worried about it. And I will tell you, I can't divulge the details of those nuclear response planning exercises, but they were not good. And I will tell folks who think that we can survive a second Donald Trump term without getting into one of those conflicts, you haven't seen what I've seen on the other side of the wall of how terrifying that could actually be. And the man does not have the discipline to avoid getting us in those situations. And he certainly will not bring in a team that reins him in from making those impulsive decisions that could spiral into catastrophic conflict. That's how bad this could actually get. And I will tell you, on top of that, uh, this was something else that I got to reveal for the first time in blowback is the department gave me permission to write a little bit about something that is privately referred to as the Doomsday Book. So there is a book inside the White House of break glass in case of emergency powers that the President of the United States allegedly has in the instance that the United States gets invaded or struck by a nuclear weapon or goes to war. And those powers allow the President to do some pretty extraordinary things to protect the country. However, in the wrong hands, those authorities could be misused to do some pretty terrible things to exert control over the United States. At the end of the Trump administration, there was a frenetic effort to keep that book out of the president's hands because people were worried that Trump would use those powers to keep the government from being transferred over to Joe Biden. And it very nearly ended up in the wrong hands of a, of a MAGA sycophant who almost got installed in the job overseeing the security of the Doomsday Book. 
I'm very worried that in a second term, Donald Trump, the, the crown jewels aren't going to be safe from him. He will go and access those tools and authorities, but not to protect the United States, but to wield his influence over the American people in a way that is, uh, by some definitions, quite clearly unconstitutional, anti-constitutional. And, and, and that's, that's a fear. So uh, I do expect there would be vastly greater geopolitical disorder in a second Trump administration as he pulls away from our Western allies and tries to get America to uh, cozy up to its enemies, uh, but also as Donald Trump tries to use some of those extraordinary foreign and defense powers uh, here domestically. And let's take a look at some quotes from the former Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, who said to associates that for the period after the November 3rd election, which resulted in Donald Trump losing and not conceding, one scenario was that Trump would try to use the military on the streets of the United States to, to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. The other was an external crisis involving Iran. Uh, it was not public at the time, but Mark Milley said that the, the nation had come very close to conflict with the Islamic Republic. And, and this dangerous post-election period, according to Mark Milley, was all because of Trump's Hitler-like embrace of the big lie that the election had been stolen from him. And Mark Milley said that he feared it was Trump's Reichstag moment, in which, like Adolf Hitler in 1933, he would manufacture a crisis in order to swoop in and try to rescue the nation from it. And, and to prevent such an outcome, Mark Milley had, since late in 2020, having phone meetings uh, uh, very early in the morning with White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in the hopes of getting the country safely through to Joe Biden's inauguration without Donald Trump blowing everything up. Mark Milley claimed that they had four goals. First, to make sure the US didn't unnecessarily go to war overseas. Secondly, to make sure that US troops were not used on the streets of the US against American citizens for the purpose of keeping Trump in power. The third was to maintain the military's integrity. And finally, to maintain his own integrity. Mark Milley referred back then to many conversations that he'd had with others. And as the crisis with Trump unfolded, and the, and the chairman's worst case fears about the president not accepting defeat appeared to come true, Mark Milley met in private with the Joint Chiefs and told them to make sure there were no unlawful orders from Trump and not to carry out any such orders without calling him first. These revelations now seem quite shocking and, and ironically it was Donald Trump who, after he discovered that these things were going on, after his presidency was over, claimed that Mark Milley deserved the death penalty. People like Mark Milley and Miles Taylor and many others in the administration kept us safe. And to claim that there was no war then and that was Trump's doing, and that now there is war when you consider that Donald Trump tried to extort Vladimir Zelensky on the telephone. Donald Trump destabilized the Middle East. And, and several things contributed to this. You know, moving the, the US Embassy to Jerusalem, number one. Uh, number two, pulling the Iran nuclear deal. So leaving Iran free to enrich uranium at whatever rate they decided and, and, and have the potential to have nuclear weapons. Even coming out of the Paris Climate Accord makes the world less safe, not just from a climate change perspective, but also this notion of unity. And, and when countries are partnering with other countries, it affords a, a level of, of communication and, and, and kind of diplomatic understanding that there are more important things than territory and borders and actually the planet itself is something that we all share and then of course cozying up to Benjamin Netanyahu and then selling huge numbers of weapons to the Saudis there were so many things that Donald Trump is responsible for that in hindsight 
scholars who specialize in understanding these theaters of war put the, the blame at the foot of Donald Trump, somebody who was completely out of their depth with international relations, didn't even know where countries were, and yet took it upon himself to completely upend many of these relationships and then creating these fake Abraham Accords, these, these supposed peace deals so that he could claim to have brought peace to the Middle East. Nothing could be further from the truth. What he did was take nations that were not in conflict and get them to, a, to agree to something and leave out the Palestinians by, by leaving out the Palestinians or Hamas even by not engaging in a diplomatic way again all contributed to the destabilization of the region I'm Anthony Davis you can find me on the five minute news channel catch me on Wednesdays co-hosting uncovered with Ron Filipkowski and on Sunday on the weekend show with Midas Touch <laughs>